Okay, so let's talk a little bit about investments. What's the first question you should answer before you put even $1 into an investment? Well, I'm guessing your financial advisor has never thought to ask this question, and you probably wouldn't think of it either. So let's get on with it. Before you invest even $1 in any investment, you need to understand how much of your investment you're willing to lose. And it's really, it's really funny because people start out actually asking the opposite question, how much do I want to make? And that's not going to help you invest wisely. So let's take a look at why this is important. By the end of this video, I'm going to point out some relationships that aren't so obvious that you'll find very useful when you decide how you're going to manage your 401k, IRA, or other investments you might have. Before we go any further, past performance is no indication of future performance. Please read the disclaimer at the end of this video. Let's take a look at the two major investment classes, equities and risk assets, the S&P 500 in red, and bonds, fixed income, the asset class that's shown here in blue. As you can see from the graph, the S&P 500 equities have just gone up and they've gone down and they've been all over the place, while bonds have been very kind of steady. So if we put all of our money into the SPY, which is the S&P 500, including dividends, it's an ETF that you can invest in. You can see over this 24 year period from the beginning of 1993, you would have gotten a compound annual rate of return of around 9%, but your maximum drawdown would have been minus 55%. Let's put that in perspective for you. So if you had $100,000 invested at the peak of the market in 2007, by the bottom of the market in 2009, you would have had $45,000 left, meaning you would have lost $55,000. If we now put all of our money in bonds, your return would have gone from 9% in the S&P 500 down to 5%, but your maximum drawdown would have gone from minus 55% in all in equities to only minus 9%. So why does any of this matter to you? Or let me put it another way, why should any of this matter to you? The, the standard allocations kind of in the industry are if you're a young person, you're in your 20s, 30s, maybe even 40s, put all your money in equities, put it all in the S&P 500 and just go for the growth. Uh, that's nice in theory, but it really doesn't work. Let me explain why this advice of being very aggressive when you're very young doesn't work. If we look at the returns of the average investor versus what the S&P 500 did, over the last 10 year period, the average investor had an annual rate of return of about 4.23%, while the S&P 500 had an rate, annual rate of return of 7.31%. That's quite a difference. Let's go back, let's just jump to the ultimate conclusion. If we go back 30 years, so almost the time period of this graph that I'm showing you, the average equity investor only got about 3.66% return versus the S&P 500, which had a 10.35% return. So why is this? Why does this happen? Oh, and, and by the way, the same holds true for bond investors, which kind of baffles me a little bit, but um, the average fixed income investor severely underperformed the aggregate bond index. So now we're getting into the meat of it. Why is that first question so important? What percentage of your portfolio are you willing to lose in a big downturn? Let's look at 2007 to 2009. This is a time frame that most of you, if you're younger, might remember. You might have been too young. Certainly, if you're older, uh, including my age, you, you definitely remember this and, and the whole 2000 to 2003 time frame. But what happened during that time frame? What happens to an investor that's heavily exposed to equities when they start to drop like that? Well, I'll tell you what happens. People become afraid. They get really scared. They see their hundred grand go down to $45,000. Um, you know, they see a $55,000 loss and they freak out. So what do they do when they freak out? They cash it in. They say, I, I can't take it anymore. I'm going to protect myself from any further losses. And so what do they do? They lock in their loss. And I can tell you from personal experience, 
uh, managing other people's money that during 2009 and 2010 and 2011 and even 2012 when the market was recovering, people were freaked out. They were really afraid. So a typical investor who cashed in after a you know 50 you know 50 to 55,000 45,000 dollar loss it doesn't matter it's all big what did they do they probably didn't get back into equities till 2012 2013 some of them 2014 so where does that lead us to once you define how much money you can stand to lose then that defines the allocations that you should put in your portfolio and live with and be very comfortable with so let's talk about some of those I'm going to take this allocation right now, which is 100% in bonds, and let's let's go to something that a lot of people think is okay. So we'll put 80% in the S&P 500 and the other 20% in bonds, which is what a lot of financial institutions say I should do if I'm a young person. Uh, I still get 90, I get 94% of the return of the S&P 500, but I still get 81% of the drawdown. That for I think for most people would be pretty unacceptable. Let's trim it. Let's make it a little more conservative. Let's put 60% of my money in the S&P 500 into SPY and 40% into bonds. So now I'm getting an 8% return with a 33% drawdown. And so I'm getting 87% of the return with only 60% of the drawdown. I kind of like the way these numbers are going here. So if you can live with a 33% loss in your portfolio instead of a 55% loss and you're fairly young, then this is a portfolio you could put your money into it and just leave it there. And when things get bad, just say to yourself, hey, I'm just gonna stick with it and I'll be fine. And you'll be able to sleep a little bit better at night. Okay, so now let's go a little bit more conservative. So let's say I only put 40% of my money in SPY and 60% in bonds. This by anybody's standards in the industry would say this is a very conservative portfolio. Uh, but whether it's conservative or aggressive or moderate, that's totally your call. It's how much loss can you stand in, in a worst case scenario. So in this case, you're getting a 7% compound annual rate of return, not bad, uh, with a 20% maximum drawdown. So think about it, you're getting almost 80% of the return, but only 37% of the drawdown. That's pretty good. And then finally, I'm gonna go super conservative here. Let's put 20% in SPY and 80% in bonds. So what do we end up with now? Well, we end up with a 6% compound annual growth rate and a 9% maximum loss, 9% drawdown. So we're getting 66% of the return of being in SPY only, but we're only getting 16% of the drawdown. Again, the odds are starting to tilt more and more in our favor. So look, when it comes down to managing your money and deciding how you're going to allocate your money, only you can decide what's acceptable. You face the risk of real consequences as opposed to volatility, whatever that is. So make sure that you're comfortable with an allocation that you can live with through good times and bad times, and you'll do much better with your investments. Thank you for watching today, and I hope you found this video useful as you plan your investment strategy. And please, if you enjoyed this, click the subscribe button below and leave any comments or questions that you might have. That's all for now. Temper, temper